Hello and welcome on Sport Updates on Trust TV. I'm Adini uh, G. Shafer, trying to take you around the world of sports in the Jiffy as we look at uh, Nigerian athletes preparing ahead of the Budapest 2023 uh, international competition there. Budapest 2023 World Athletics Championship. Chioma Onyekwere throw 64.96 meters to qualify and it's a celebration right now because a lot of athletes are just looking for honors to see how they can make it to Budapest but right now this Nigerian discus thrower has done well for herself by throwing 64.96 beating the records or, or standards set by the authorities concerning that particular competition there well good one for Chioma uh, Onyekwere now Nigerians will be hoping to see more of uh, Nigerian athletes qualifying there uh, congratulations to her and we hope that she will get there to perform well. While joining me in the studio, I have uh, Jide Olushola. Good to have you in the studio. Yeah, good evening. Yes, uh, good evening. you just saw that particular story there. I see you smiling. Uh, no, I, <laughs> no, I just love the picture. You know, the, mm. that picture is beautiful. Okay. You know? I'm sure uh, Chairman should look for that picture and frame it. Seriously? And, and it in, her, in, her, in, her, in her room. Well, looking okay. at the fact that right now she has done the business of qualifying for the uh, Budapest 2023 World Athletic Championship, yeah. and uh, a lot of people are happy. It shows that really this lady, uh, I, I still remember another lady called Falasha, they was into short put. Yeah, yes. Both of them have been very fantastic when it comes to this sport of this course, short put mm. hammer. Yes, yes. You look at S.A. Uh, Brume in long jump, she's doing well. You look at Toby Amusha mm -hmm, in yeah. hurdles, she's also doing well. It seems our ladies, really, let's, let's give them kudos. Of, of they've, course, they've really of made course, uh, course. Nigerian uh, sport to be uh, put at the world map. Uh, anytime you think of any sport, Think of Nigerian women. Really, they are doing well. No, like you said, we, uh, we, we need to give them our kudos for, you know, they, they've been doing very well from Amos uh, to Sebrumena to Choma to, you know, all of them. Hmm. The girls, they've been doing the very well. The Paralympics, all you know, of them. They've been doing very, very well. And uh, it's not surprised that uh, Choma is uh, get, getting to this stage as well because she has done this in the past uh, at the African, African level. Now, she, now, she, now it's, it's, she's, not, she's not going international again. So hmm. it's not surprising for me to see Choma doing this. Uh, my just, my just, my, Pre now is that uh, when she gets to uh, Budapest, Budapest she, of course, she she will meet tougher opposition. Then that's what we will now see a uh, real talent again coming out. But I believe she will surely do well uh, because it's something that she has been doing over the years. It's something that she has, she has she's used to. Mm. She has faced oppositions, stronger positions, and she has always triumphed. So going to Budapest to throw to even beat her own record is very feasible because she can do it. She has, the, she has the strength, she has the mentality, she has the ability to do it. And I'm looking forward to more uh, to success from her when she gets to uh, Budapest. We hope to see more of uh, Chioma Onyekwere there right now, doing so well, qualifying very early for the Budapest 2023. That will be coming up at uh, World Athletics Championship there. She will represent Nigeria in this course. And we just have to appreciate the fact that she has done well. Let's look at another story. IMC to remain in office to complete uh, mandate, according to NFF. Right now, looking at the fact that uh, uh, NFF uh, uh, rolled out that they will be constituting boards uh, in, in a month's time concerning NWF, NFF, and, or uh, MPF, and all that. But right now, they had to put this one out. Interim management committee are the one governing or running the affairs of the MPFL. But they said, well, they have to run and end this particular league that they are running. No, it's just normal. Just, mm -hmm. That's the right thing to do because you can't put them off now and institute a, a board for MPFL now. Mm -hmm. That is, yeah, when the dig is still on, yes, you are going to cause commotion because the, the board that you, you will inaugurate, they, will, they might try to cancel certain things of the IMC or whatever. So, this is the right move for IMC. Though the, though the, uh, the IMC was supposed to stay for three months, but then it was renewed, allocated. Now, they've been told that they will stay at the end of the season, which, which will end by next month, mm. by God's grace, and everything. And it is very, very, uh, it's a very laudable idea, I mean, I mean from, the, uh, from the NFF. Know, to tell them that your mandate is to the end of the season. And kudos to uh, IMC, led by, by, by Mr. Uh, Honorable uh, Winger, Ele Ele Bele. Bele. he has done fabulously well in, in, this, in this very short time. He has done to see that the Nigerian league you know, comes up very well. Uh, we have seen away teams winning games, and of course, we have seen beautiful games. And they even where some clubs have misbehaved, they've been punished. They dealt with them. Yes, financially and, of course, uh, points deduction. Right? So it, it, they are bringing insanity into the system, and it's, it's very, very good for the Nigerian football. And, of course, though, though we are not doing well on the African stage, but we, can, we are still reverse United, of course, you know, doing, not, uh, doing well for us on this stage. We are going, going, out to play, going out to play very soon. So we, I, I, I'm glad that uh, the IMC has done this much compared to what the uh, LMC I've done in the past. LMC was just, uh, I'm trying to say, they really messed up. Hmm. 
as in they, they really messed up. Though they had good ideas, but I think they they, they, they the they, execution they, of those yes, ideas were they, too they, poor. They didn't follow their, their own ideas. I think they were at some points they were they were relaxed and they didn't follow up their with their, their rules and regulations, except on on few occasions where they would they raise the armor out on clubs. Uh, but then IMC has been very very consistent with that with that. And then they they've gotten sponsors. Yeah, no, that would that would take our support. Them. Yes, and then the money for the clubs I mean, give even for even for the league started. They gave out. They gave I think two hundred million. Yes, that's ten million. Yes, ten million now to each club to go and start to to start uh, the run of your of your of your of your of your club of your players, and and they're going to give out uh, a cash prize of hundred million to the winners of this. But and then, all the, in the past, LMC never gave out money to clubs. We have, so all, all the money LMC and the LMC they're in debt. You know that they are still a bit old. So many things are, are but uh, IMC has come in, you know, in, in a very in a very short while to you know sanitize the system. And uh, I just pray that uh, this same this same board they are allowed to you know even to uh, even to prepare for the next season. Probably they should be part of the new board. Yes, some of them at some least them. let them yeah. make it. Yeah, part of the new board that will be that will be inaugurated or be instituted next for the for the, for, for the coming season because uh, this board has really this IMC rather they've really done they've done their very best in a very very short time in a very short time we've seen what the interim management committee set up by the nff to run the affairs of football in nigeria but right now the good thing is uh they, we are actually enjoying the fact that the league despite it's a, a bridge league you see it going well and uh, you can't take that away and hopefully it will get better as uh, they continue to execute uh, the league there well from the way it is now we move away from the imc story let's talk about uh, see about nigerian football but this time around the federation's cup is starting soon and uh, uh, round of 64 uh, draws be made. Well, it's going to be a big one because two <laughs> two big teams, you can call it two of them elephant, but one is elephant uh, Faba. Rivers United to battle Ayimba International in star match of round of 64 in the Federation's Cup. That's uh, somebody was like, why putting <laughs> it's too early? <laughs> why putting Ayimba and Rivers together? What uh, happened? Round of How did the draw Honestly, go to it, that? It, it's too early. But maybe to if the round of 12, round of 16, uh, round of uh, 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 8 or there about for 64. It's, it's just, what it's, happened? They don't. It's <laughs> just too early for them to meet now. Oh my goodness. Automatically now, one of them is going to drop. Drop. At the same time, it's good because you will now see the maybe the NLO team or NLO team, you know, the so-called giant killers coming mm. on board, you know, and make a statement. That's the beauty of uh, of this. Federation Cup. Yes, you no, know, you see smaller teams. You have seen smaller teams defeating the bigger teams in the past. Club or non club. That you don't just know, come and you shock, don't, you don't know shock everyone. I saw a team mm. in that list uh, at that logo there. I was like, wow, what a so, team. Teams that you, don't, you have no idea. You don't even know where they, where they, where where they, they play. Where they play, but they, they can just come. I remember, I, 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 I tried to record them with this team that defeated Kamu Pillar, defeated Ayimba themselves about two or three seasons ago. One unknown, hmm. unknown giant killers. But they, so that's just a bit of this, uh, friend, but for Ayimba and, uh, and Rivers, Rivers. It's, just, it's just too early for them to meet. It's too early. Too early uh, but but really, uh, though, even though it was a draw, but uh, uh, come on. Uh, people were, see, see people they could not, have given them, uh, they could have you know, separated the big boys first out. And then? Play, at okay. least separate the big boys, yeah. then get the other smaller teams on one side. So as you are doing the draw, make sure it's actually interwoven. Yeah, so but you need people to come and watch all these kind of games at you know, when it gets to the uh, to the deciding games hmm. from a uh, uh, round of 16. 16, like that. You know, you need all these kind of clubs. Not I, I'm not going to watch. What do you call that club again? Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to watch them. Whatever they you know, mm. at uh, at uh, round of uh, quarterfinals, no. I would rather prefer to watch clubs like Kano Pillars or Aimba or you know, like the big But you cannot mix them up with the, the, the smaller. The smaller thing. And if there's going to be a shocking moment, let it come naturally. Yes. So that uh, you'll be like, okay, you really worked for it. Yes. You deserve to be there. Well, if any 60, smaller thing. But round of 64. I don't know how they did the draw, but... Rivers versus Ayimba. Yeah, Maybe was, because they wanted a star match that would draw a lot of people to watch, you know, trying to, you know, I, I just see the, the IMC... Uh, smart, uh, smart FC and... Uh, Ayimba. <laughs> or, uh, <laughs> yeah, or something. Or another smaller team to face uh, Rivers. By the way, it's a draw, but how they did the draw is just le it's left to the... Well, just so at least uh, it's football anyway. It's always yeah. good like that to let the big boys also showcase themselves. Even though it's going to be a star match between Rivers and uh, Ayimba... <laughs> 
<laughs> it's a fight to finish there because two elephants will be meeting and you know this uh, the grass will be suffering there a big one between uh rivers united defending champion mpf and Ayimba. yes they are the most successful club when it comes to football in nigeria so far for what they've done in CAF and also looking at Nigerian professional football, rather Premier Football League. Uh, they just give you updates concerning what's happening about the Federations Cup that will be starting soon. And now we quickly have to go abroad. Now let's try look at some games that will be coming up tonight. First of all, we pitch our tent over there at the Europa League. Europa League will be starting. Uh, we look at the second leg, uh, quarter final, second leg fixtures. Roma will be facing Feyenoord. Sevilla will be at home against Manchester United. It ended 2-2 in the fourth leg, and that's a fight to finish. For Roma and Feyenoord, Feyenoord actually led the first leg by a long goal, and it's still very dicey because Roma can actually turn things around. Sporting Lisbon, Juventus, you know, seeing Glois versus uh, uh, Bayern Leverkusen. But we are focusing on two out of these four, although we have uh, Nigeria and uh, Boniface will be in Union St. Glois. And uh, right now, let's look at Roma first. The possible lineup for Roma. Uh, tonight in that game, you look at uh, for Roma lineup uh, from the goalkeeper department: uh, Rui Patricio, Gualenka Mancini, Smalling, Ibanez, Zaleski, Cristante. You have uh, Nemanja Matic, uh, Leonardo Spinazzola, Sharawi, Lorenzo Pellegrini, and you have Tammy Abraham. That's uh, uh, for possible lineup for Roma, they could be playing 3 4 2 1. And for Manchester, uh, for, for Feyenoord, 4 3 3. Uh, you look at the goal post, you have uh, Justin Bilo there, David Hankel, Ganotrona, uh, Lucharel Gatruda, and you have Hartman at the back uh, ahead of the goalkeeper, Okun Koko, Mas Welfa, Sebastian Simaski. You have Jan Bakic, Jimenez, and also Osama Idrisi uh, in, at the front there. Well, 4 3 is the formation that Feyenoord could be playing against AS Roma. Let's look at this side by side, GD. Uh, you, <laughs> it's a tough one because Roma are trailing Feyenoord by Longo. Which, and it's at the Stadio Olimpico in Rome. Which is something that they can easily get. They mm. can easily, of course, they can score against uh, uh, Feyenoord. Feyenoord. No, one, goal, one, goal, one goal difference is nothing when it comes to uh, knockouts I mean, like, this. like this. If it's three goals, it can be difficult. But one goal, of course, I expect uh, Jose Mourinho... Being, a, being, a, being an experienced coach, being somebody who has been in this uh, system for a very long time, that Tammy Brown, who, is, who he loves so much like his son, uh, will be able to deliver the goods for. And he has, he has fantastic players in, in, in his squad. Of course, um, Martin Jusson, he has known for, for a very long time. The is, 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 is his countryman. I uh, remember I brought in Dybala, so a lot of uh, options. He, yeah, he has options that they can use that will get, that will get him the goods in, in Rome. Hmm. I know, and uh, there's, 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 few, there's, a, there's a kind of love that the Romans have for Rome, for, for, for Roma, you know. And uh, Maria has brought in so much excitement that into that, into that city that they always come out in, in, in mass, they come out in full colors, you know, to tell their teams. And you expect that if they're not, they're going to be drowned in uh, San Diego Olimpico tonight hmm. because the Roman army, including the fans, they are coming. They are coming in their full force to ensure that they get the maximum, not, not the maximum point, the defeats for you not and, and, and qualify. Roma, for rather. Yes. Okay, now, my, my only fear is the fact that the, the, the Feyenoord team, they are very, very youthful, young, okay. agile players. Although I know Mourinho, he knows what to do when he's looking for uh, a win. A win. And coupled with the fact that Riz, uh, right, just uh, at least he won the Europa Conference League with the same AS Roma. Yes. Right? So it's like he has taken them from step three to step two. two. Now the step two is here. All he needs to do is to inculcate to them that, okay, you won this last year. That's Europa Conference Perfect. League. This is Europa League. It's bigger. The money is bigger. Why don't you go out there and do the business? But I look at Feyno, like I said, very youthful yeah. team. Yeah, it's, you find that almost like Ajax, mm. you know, uh, three seasons ago. Or I think they're about where, you know, where they stunned the old, the old world to get to the finals of uh, of the, of the Champions League, you know, very, very useful. And so it's almost the same thing with. You no, know, there's something about Dutch football. They invest so much in, uh, in useful players. Maybe we can just have maybe one or two old players that just to get them for experience. But they, they focus, they, they build a team with uh, useful players. So it's not surprising that they not as more useful players than uh, than uh, uh, AS Roma. Mm. We have, of course, we have older players, set and above in their squad. But but this, this is where the experience will not come in on the side of the Roman players against the usefulness of the Feyenoord uh, team. Uh, yeah, the Feyenoord, they can, they can start to use their speed and everything, their agility. But then, uh, I expect players like a Matic 
who has played in the Champions League, who has played in the final, who has played, in, of course, able to, you know. The experience is there. The experience is there. Uh, the baller has what if he plays, as if he plays, of course, he's also very experienced. Having played with Juventus, having played, of course, for Italy as well too. I'm sorry for uh, Argentina. Argentina. So it can, it can, they, they should bring their experience on board against a youth, a youth side. But then I still, like I said, earlier, I'm still going to uh, pitch my tent with uh, the with uh, yes, Roma. Roma. No. Now Sevilla, Manchester United, two two fourth leg, two two, and now they are going to the home of uh, Sevilla. Uh, we know yes, uh, they might not be at their best right now. It's a tough one for them, but I see a team. Looking at this particular possible lineup for uh, Sevilla right now, you have Bono, you have Gonzalo Motel, Niazo, Macau, Akuna, Gudel, you have Lucas Ocampos, experienced Ivan Rakitic at number 10 there, Oliver Torres, Fernando, Yusuf El Nesri. Do you think Manchester United, let's look at my United possible lineup. You look at the video here at the back, 4 2 3 1, Diego <laughs> Dalot, Lindlof. <laughs> Fred Casemiro, I still don't know why you are laughing anyway. Harry <laughs> Maguire, although uh, it's a possible lineup. Aaron Wan Bisaka, Eric Sin, Anthony, Martial at the front, and you have Jadon Sancho. You know why I'm laughing because of Harry Maguire. Well, I, I, <laughs> because, <laughs> what if he's going to be the one to save because Man United? He, he was not a cause that down for. He could save them. It, uh, it, now, it, it could be the savior now. You just, you just got in. <laughs> Someone's actually saying Maguire, but really. What if Maguire is going to be the savior tonight? But he has been, <laughs> uh, he has, he has been the last game. He, he just came in a few minutes to end of the game, and of course, Ongo. You cause uh, Ongo. <laughs> so uh, Ari Maguire, you no, know, just uh, you know, Sevilla, that the king, that the king of uh, Europa, Europa League, mm. and they've won it back to back three times, you know, and they've won it several times against. Uh, uh, and uh, it's going to be very difficult for Manu, you know, on the most you know, for Manu to mm. to really defeat Sevilla in Spain. It's, they can defeat, but they have to. That means they have to really, really work out their socks, you know, to, to get the victory. To get the victory, uh, all what Sevilla just do is just get a, a, a probably a goalless draw or a one-one draw, and you know, and mm, but, but you know, a way, a way does, yes. it doesn't count anymore. Oh, that's no. true. It's that's, over. Yes, it's yes they don't so, use that but anymore. I, but maybe a, a one-zero one win and they lock up their mm. defense or something just to get that. It's going, to, it's going to be very difficult for uh, Man United. Man, they, can defeat, they can defeat Sevilla, but... They but the way you see it is that it's more difficult for Manchester United than Sevilla. Yes, more difficult. Because for them to have gone, for them to, have gone to, to Old Trafford, trailing 2-0, and come back to 2-2, and two, 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 mm -hmm. even though they're lucky goals. But it's just so that for them to have been going forward, meant that they, they needed those goals. And those goals came for them via, via mistake. Uh, from Harry Maguire and your friend, <laughs> <laughs> your friend Harry Maguire. But really, uh, I think it's high time the the uh, technical crew, or coaching crew of Man United should look into Harry Maguire. Uh, it's, it's not as if he's the only one that, that must be used. Uh, uh, luckily for them now, Nacho is. I mean, uh, uh, Martinez uh, is injured. Mm. For only going when it, when it comes back to me, to me that guy is one of the best defenders we have in this in the world right now because he puts his heart, body, soul. He doesn't. He, he puts his body to block shots. Mm. He's not the kind of player that puts his arm behind his back and dodge ball. You no, know, he puts. So who, do, who does that? Uh, we, we've seen what this guy, this Liverpool, uh, Liverpool defender. Van Dijk? Van Dijk, he, he does that. <laughs> so, yeah. no, I thought we were to mention Maguire. I mean, what has Maguire done to you? <laughs> no, no. But Maguire sometimes, he also puts his edge, some, but sometimes... He's he, a dodgeball. But he's just, I don't know, he's just be unlucky. He's just unlucky. I, I watch, uh, if you check, Maguire, Van, uh, Van, uh, Van Dijk, Hukurea, those kind of players. What's happening to them? Before they came to these big clubs, they were, really, well. they were really rock solid defenders, rock solid. If you check, it's all, in fact, somebody is calling uh, Hukureya the, the lady of Chelsea because of the <laughs> fact that the only thing you see is the air yeah. and the next thing you see a calamity coming up. But really, really, these are defenders that did well where they came from, from Brighton, from uh, Leicester or thereabout. But they all did well before they came to this. Even when they got there, I still remember VVD getting best defender and yeah, all that. Yes, uh, yes. when they got to uh, Liverpool, for Ali was... To, go, to even go past uh, VVD, you have to struggle. Yes. Yeah. But, so what went wrong today with them, all, most of these guys? But looking at uh, Kukura and, uh, um, and Emmanuel, I think they could not meet up with the pressure of playing at the, very, at the, at the top, top level. level. Uh, you know, they're comfortable playing at, at the mid-table. So at, at that mid-table, they, they knew that they had nothing to lose and they had nothing to gain, except just to play football. Hmm. When, uh, when um, Aramagua was at Leicester, it was, it was fantastic. Hmm. 
though or, uh, nobody knew him per se, but he was doing his job silently. But the moment he was bought for over 80 million pounds and everything, all the pressure now, became, now came on him. But when he goes to England, he does, he does quite well for, for England as well. Too. He scores some, some, some goals for England. But when it comes to my, I think that pressure is too much. And then the insults, the bullying, bullying social media attack everything. and all that. If I were him, I just, I, I just, I just I'm leaving. I, I just leave for Looking at the club. Club. Yeah. <laughs> We're talking about Manchester United against Sevilla tonight. A big one there that will be happening. Now, quickly, let's uh, flip straight to the Europa Conference League. Our games will also be coming up in the Europa Conference, the top tier of UEFA competitions. Let's look at the fixtures quickly. Uh, before we uh, give you the uh, uh, story from transfer, Aikman uh, uh, versus Anderlet that will be coming up so soon. Uh, faster, that will be the first game. And you have Fiorentina, Lecce, Posner, OGC, Nice, Basel, West Ham United, KAA, Ghent. Let's look at the two OGC, Nice versus Basel quickly. Looking at the possible lineup for OGC, Nice, there you have it at the goalpost. You have Schmeichel, Kaspar, there Yusuf, Ndashimi, uh, Todibo, Dante. You have uh, Ramsey, Aaron. You have Labode, Terry Murphy at the top. They are top nine, they are Rosari and all of them ready. Let's look at uh, the team they'll be facing. OGC needs right now are ready to also face Basel 3 5 2. Mawin, he's Pelman, Mila, Boga, you have uh, uh, Jaka, and not forgetting, and Duni, Zekiri, all of them battle ready to face uh, uh, OGC needs there. And quickly, let's look at West Ham also. West Ham possible lineup 4 3 3. I realize there, Vladimir Kofa, you look at Zuma, called Zuma, Aguard, Imasin, Declan Rice, the one that will be pursued by Chelsea, Manu, and all of them. Side Barama, Danny Ings, General, uh, Bowen, Paqueta, and Downs, all battle ready for this particular uh, game. Uh, while we look at the opponent, KAA Ghent, uh, the team from Belgium, they have uh, uh, battle ready with the Nigerian gift Urban at the front, who go guy. guy Pass. You have uh, Hyun Sin Hong, uh, Fofana, the Sad Coombs, Castro Montes, Toru Nariga, Okumo, you have uh, Platowski, and you have David Ruff. 3 4 1 2. Uh, well, from this way, from the way it is right now, just to let you have a feel of uh, what is happening concerning those games. Quickly, before we wrap it up, let's look at uh, West Ham once leads Paulo Francesca as a potential replacement for David uh, Moyes. And also, Chelsea could offload Edward Mendy for Ariza Balaga for Dortmund's uh, goalkeeper Grigor uh, Puel. There, those are the stories that to let you have a feel of uh, uh, transfer stories there. Grigor Kobel could take over uh, in the place of either Edward Mendy or Ariza Balaga. It's been a wonderful time with Jide Olushola in the studio. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for having me. And uh, right now, we have to wrap it up with a sport update. I'm Adini Ajishafe. Thanks for watching.